Little Whale Explores the Calm Sea 3. This video will be going over your right hand. And before I start talking much about that, I want to encourage you to um, make a copy of your page that is a copy to begin with that has the counts written in. In fact, make several copies. That way you can use this one that has all the counts marked in to study other things. So when you're getting ready to play this, another thing, you might see the sharps marked in. I don't have that many F sharps to play for altogether, but they're so important that I recommend that you make a large sharp amongst above the Fs so you're ready to go. Our right hand has some things that it has to leap to get. And speaking of F sharp, it's going to be a landmark for you. So you always start off with your fourth down here, and then you're going to be using um, the appropriate finger there to just locate that F sharp right here. You're not going to be playing the F sharp yet. You're going to be play the note beside it. So on the first line, and we play with the fifth finger beside it. So we're going to be starting and so forth. On the next line, when we get to measure nine, we have the fourth again. But this time we're going to use our pointer finger to find the F sharp and the third finger. So practice going between the two uh, extremes here, from the fourth up to whatever you're looking for. So in addition to having the sharps marked on these ones especially, it can be good to mark in the fingering. So that maybe even put a circle around it so you're telling yourself, okay, I'm down here. I'm going to use my finger to go up there and find the F sharp. Yes, it's finger four I'm going to use, so I'll be all set up. Or on the next line, I'm going to be using my pointer finger on that F sharp. So, and so on. Repetition is the price of learning. If you want to be confident and have your beats go without a big pause there, you're going to have to practice it. Let's talk about the next fingering. Here we're at the end of the phrase, and we have five to one. Five on the B, one on the E. And then you're going to need to scoot down to get these two notes and eventually get into G position. For now, you're going to be going over to get the C and D with these two fingers, three and four. So practice going back and forth. And doing that movement in different ways. And then you can practice doing the phrase that comes before these target notes. So uh, let's talk about the target notes. Measure 13 and 14. We have four and three, four at the top. And then we have four stays the same and we go down to have our thumb on an A. Easy peasy, so back and forth. And then we have a shuffle. So we get to measure 15, we have a shuffle. Right there, you might even wanna write the word in shuffle. Maybe you'd write in G position because that's what you're headed for. You want to have every finger lined up in G position. That's going to be easy peasy if you get everything lined into a G position. On my copy here, I'm going to put a sort of a bracket over that. And, um, you know, I'm using a pencil, but you could color code that. G position. I'll put G P O S period. And I know that I'm going to have to shuffle there. So I might even put sort of a circle around the five and three or an, a little arrow that tells me, hey, this is a shuffle. By shuffle, I mean we're sort of in a position like this on the four and three. And we need to get it so that our thumb is not on A but on G. Okay, last phrase, uh, last long phrase of the song. We have to get from here back up to the E. So you're going to be practicing going from here 
up to here. Here your fingers are all lined up. Their highest note is D. It's right beside you. So easy peasy. So let's do a fifth. That's our G position fifth. Up to the E. Like that. Back and forth. And then you're going to just follow the round. You're going to go one. And here's another important fingering. Three on that B. Very important because that's how everything will just work out properly coming on down. So that three is not what you'd expect. You'd expect to have a five there. But it's going to be three instead. So giant three, circle, put a little arrow, some kind of mark to say it's going to be a little different than normal. This four is also very, very crucial. Four on the sharp. Oh, worked out perfectly. G position. And then the left hand takes over the quarter note, and we have yet another fourth. And then we come way up here for our last fourth. Lots of verbiage to tell you about this. Even more important than these small observations that I've made is making it so that you have really paid attention to the fingering, to the sharps, where your hands need to go, and practicing it in a very intentional way where you repeat a small section and then you repeat it again and you repeat it slowly until you have it evenly.